six, maybe seven main types of different strategies you can use business. The first one would be, um, let's say, a global strategy, which means that you're treating the world as a single market. So you standardize all of your products, you're standardizing your marketing strategies across all the countries. And it means that you've got global economies of scale because you're offering the same product. So that would be brands like Apple, um, who have cost efficiencies, really consistent brand imaging and streamlined operations. But it means that they're not able to respond to local preferences or maybe cultural mismatches. Then you've got companies who use a more what you might call multi-domestic strategy, which means that they customize the products, they customize the marketing strategies to fit the specific needs of each local market and decentralize pretty much everything. It's very highly responsive to the needs of the local markets and what the customers might need, but it's quite an expensive solution. Um, you don't actually see it in a really pure form, but companies like, say, McDonald's often do it insofar as they do introduce a lot of very locally tailored menus to, con to meet local taste and preferences. And then I guess the third one would be something which is like a transnational approach, which is kind of a mix of the previous two. So where you're trying to balance global efficiency and local responsiveness, um, because you want to have that those bef uh, the benefits of that efficient operations with but combined with local adaptability. The problem with it is that it's really complex to manage. It requires a lot of coordination. It requires a lot of communication. Um, brands who do this well would be something like Unilever, who standardize some of their products whilst they customize some of the others to meet local demands. Then you could have what is called um, an export strategy where basically you sell domestically produced goods in foreign markets. This is sometimes the first step for companies who are going international. So it's minimal investment, minimal risk. It's quite easy to implement. It does mean that you've got not much control over the marketing and distribution. You might struggle with trade barriers, but it's often the way that small and medium sized companies start out. And of course, you've got the option of things like licensing and franchising. That would probably be number, what is it now, five? Um, granting a foreign company the rights to produce and sell products under your brand name. Franchising would be similar, but that's like a more comprehensive package, including the brand, the operation systems, ongoing support. Investments are low, quick market entry, local market expertise. You can take advantage of that. You've got less control. Um, it would be things like the typical examples would be things like fast food chains. So Subway or brands like Nike who use franchising for their, um, their stores. Uh, then in the production field, you've got things like joint ventures and alliances. So forming a partnership with a local company to share resources, risks, but also, of course, profits. So you get access to the local knowledge. You share your risks and your costs. Um, but on the other hand, you've got a partner who is might not have the same ideas of you, so it can get quite complex. If you look at markets like Turkey, for example, um, it's often in the past been a condition for precondition for entry. So companies like IKEA or Carrefour entered into Turkey with a, part, a local partner, Sabanchi, in order to get into the market. And probably the final main strategy that gets used in international business would be having wholly owned subsidiaries. So you have your own operation or you buy a company and get full control over the marketing, the strategy and every step of the process. It means you can have a consistent strategy, protect your IP, but it's really high risk. It's high investment and it's quite complicated to manage if you don't have very good experience in the market in question. So you've often got to be a giant or you've got to have very long term knowledge of the market. People like Google, Amazon, they often do this or very big international companies, Coca-Cola, for example, they would do that.